A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. So Unreal Engine 5.1 has now dropped. You can find it in the dev community over here. Clicking on it will get to the post for the release which puts up a bullet point over some of the things that have been improved. So things like Lumen Nanite, virtual shadow maps, uh, ways to work smarter, uh, world partition things, uh, HLOD things. We have things uh, related to virtual production, broadcast and live events, animation, rigging and modeling, and audio and AI. So you essentially have these groupings of some of the different things that have been improved, but this is basically a high level overview. If you want to get into some details, you can go to the blog post instead. I'll leave the links for all of these uh, down below in the description. And this is the blog post. In the blog post, we can find more details about what has been released. And the big thing, of course, for many will be the Lumen Nanite and Virtual Shadow Maps updates, uh, where they are essentially improving upon the different systems that will be allowing next gen consoles to play a uh, much higher fidelity of uh, graphics. Uh, the main part for Nanite in this release is, of course, the improvement which allows. Uh, nanite to run uh, material deformations so you can have leaves blowing in the winds kind of effects and such things um, so that is out and we have already covered this of course in one of the videos on the highlights of 5.1 but now it is officially out in addition to that we have the increased developer efficiency in this category they touch upon a few different things like virtual assets and automating the pipeline for DirectX 12, but the one thing that might stand out to most people is most likely the on the major shader compilation, which is when they allow you to actually work um, more with the engine without having to wait for shaders being complete. Um, so this will be offloaded a little bit and will allow for uh, projects to open up and be worked on faster essentially in the future. Moving on from there, we have the enhanced world building tools. In this section, they go through and touch upon some of the things related to world partition, which is partly that it will be supporting large world coordinates. Um, in the past, the larger the world you created, the more errors you could get in uh, determining your positionings. Uh, now you can create even larger worlds without this being a problem. Uh, they're also touching upon some source control improvements and some improvements they have made to water bodies and rendering, which allows it to be but much uh, more performant as well as taking less memory. Uh, next up, we have the updates for virtual production broadcast and live events. Now, this is not something that I'm that much involved in, but essentially what they're doing here is they're allowing some more uh, camera in uh, in-camera visual effects editor uh, support. So you'll have some, um, if you, you're more familiar with uh, editing softwares for videos and stuff like that, or maybe even uh, image editing, you'll have some more um, uh, tools available to you to uh, manipulate the output essentially. So that's uh, this part. Uh, off to the next part, we're talking about animation, rigging and modeling enhancements. In this section, they touch a little bit upon how they can be using and leveraging machine learning deformer to create some uh, rig deformations and also how it can be used with a Maya plugin. And you can see some differences between two different uh, versions here of uh, using the machine learning and not. Uh, the one on the left is the machine learning and the one on the right is the original one or regular one. In addition to that, they also touch upon how they are improving on the control rig, making it move towards being a procedural rigging and how they have added some more features uh, in relation to both rigging and sequencer when it comes to it. Uh, in addition to that also, this is a small footnote, but kind of important for some, how they're improving the geometry scripting tools uh, for allowing more mesh editing and creation. Next up, we have the audio system enhancements. The main point here is essentially that Meta Sounds is being um, 
more fleshed out, getting more features with more node types and uh, support for various multi-channel output formats, and also the introduction of Soundscape. Uh, this I'm not familiar with, so I can't really speak much to this, but we can move on to the AI toolset and talk a little AI, <clears throat> sorry, AI toolset and talk a little bit more about this. In this section, they're mainly touching upon uh, the different AI related tools that Unreal Engine has provided that will be going into production ready state from their beta state uh, between the 5.0 and 5.1 release. So uh, I think there are three big things here. They're mentioning mass entity, which is their framework for data oriented calculations that enables large scale worlds and creating crowds. So you can essentially make performant AI in large numbers. Um, smart objects, and I have done a video on this uh, earlier. And in this one, this is one of the tools that are getting into production ready state, which allows your AI to interact with objects in the world and have them sort of modularized and act intelligently as sort of points of interest. Next up we have the state tree which is also going into production ready state and that is a sort of hierarchical uh, state machine uh, which you can use to uh, sort of if you imagine how animation blueprints work it's similar to how those state machines are built up but it has a a sort of tree-like structure to it uh, that looks a little bit uh, different. Uh, we will be getting back to this at some point in later videos as well. Uh, after that we can see that it's done. You can click here to get to the release notes which takes you to the actual documentation part of the release. And here you can see that there is quite a lot that is being released here. So you see there are a large number of different groupings of things that they go through and there is a lot of information here on each of the different categories. So I'll just uh, go through a few of the ones that I find most interesting but I'll leave the links to all of these three different pages in the description so if you want to get into the details of it feel free to do so. Uh, up first is of course again Lumen and how they are improving how Lumen works and what they have done to make it look better. There are a bunch of different uh, uh, areas here where they are targeting uh, both when it comes to ray tracing uh, and also when it comes to the translucencies and they also have made improvements over certain areas uh, related to for example water and we also have the part about uh, the materials in nanites. Uh, let's see if we can maximize this and you can see that the, the materials are moving in the wind, which is what you did not have available to you before when it came to your nanite foliage. Uh, in addition to that, you can also see that there are a bunch of different things here related to this that they are improving and the, the temporal super resolution improvements, path tracer improvements, GPU light mass improvements, uh, also translucent overlay material, which is essentially a material that will be added to uh, skeletal meshes and static meshes, so you can have them uh, sort of uh, have uh, material effects running on top of them, so you can uh, make use of some cool effects, like shown in this video here, and it will be showing up like this in the editor for you when you want to make use of it. The on-demand shader compilation, which is that the shaders will be uh, used, uh, they will not be used, they will be compiled in a way that will be less obtrusive to the, the user itself. Next, coming back to the part about uh, world partitioning being upgraded and improved upon, we can now see that the actual effect of uh, improving the support to large world coordinates will allow your worlds, or not your maximum worlds of course, but the default worlds will go from 22 kilometers to 88 million kilometers. So that should give you sort of a ballpark figure of how much larger you can make your worlds without running into issues of this type. Then we have a subject of a UMG view model. Uh, the view model is something uh, many tutorials teach when teaching uh, UI in Unreal Engine that 
uh, you bind different variables to have your health bar or whatever displayed, which is very bad for performance because it keeps uh, updating in, on frames even when the information isn't being changed, which is uh, updates that you don't really need to run which is what they're mentioning over here as attribute binding. And the alternative to that would be to have event-driven updates, which is uh, what I tend to teach in my UI tutorials, which is that you get more performance and up-to-date information. However, the, the drawback with that is that you have to make that coding uh, yourself to make sure that it updates when you expect it to. The view model is supposed to be a blend between both these two things and providing the best of, two, of the two wor worlds. Essentially, the attribute binding is uh, there for the ease of use, but the view model will work as sort of a state layer, which will keep track of your different variables and will only send the information to the UI when an event uh, or it will send an event to the ui when a value has changed so that the ui only updates whenever it actually is being uh, driven or changed by a, uh, some some code essentially that you have so it's supposed to be a blend between both uh, to improve both for performance and for ease of use Next up, we touch on some of the improvements to the modeling and sculpting tools. And here you can see that the UV editor has been moved into beta in this release. Now, this will, of course, just show how Unreal Engine is moving towards a more uh, encompassing engine, allowing you to do a lot of different things that you normally would do in uh, other programs and softwares to be able to make. Um, so. Blender will still be the best for modeling and for creating your UVs and sorting all of that stuff up. But you at least have some uh, helpful tools to make some minor changes or setups in Unreal Engine as it keeps on maturing overall. And as our very last topic, uh, let's touch a little bit on destruction. So Chaos Destruction has been improved further. You have a bunch of different features that have been added. You also have some things like the Damage Watchers adder, which is a, a tool that allows you to uh, simulate your, your uh, destruction and then see how it was affected by different damage numbers and you can see what caused different things to happen. So you can see in this example here, you can see that the damage that different parts have taken and which parts were broken as a consequence to it uh, in conjunction with their damage thresholds over here. Um, a bunch of different uh, changes to the tools that are available for uh, Chaos Destruction as well and some features, functions, and general quality of life improvements. But I do recommend that you go and check this out. There is a lot of really interesting things here, depending on what kind of areas interest you. Uh, but yeah, make sure to check it out. Uh, that's all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.